start in a child's pose. Child's pose. And if you can't see me, I'm going to do some of it. And then I come back and I look at you in these little boxes. Child's pose. Let your knees go wide. Yeah. Spread your arms any which way that feel good for you this morning. So even sometimes it's nice to be in a child's pose and I like to wrap my hands into a backwards prayer. I'm demonstrating it here. It's kind of a nice way to do this. Gives you a little shoulder opener. The front of the forehead rests on the mat. And if it's not, if you're struggling with that, always use something nearby like a block and have your forehead resting on that. Yeah. Spread your lower back across the base of your feet. Yeah, and just connect to your breath this morning. Ujjayi breath is what's recommended. And I always remind you that the breath is inhale through the nose, through the back of the throat, and exhale through the nose, through the back of the throat. And if you do nothing but come here and just breathe, that is a successful yoga practice. So don't put so much pressure on yourself this morning. Do you know, go 110%. Sometimes we just need to do a little, okay? Wherever your arms are, spread them forward, spread the palms into the mat, make a strong connection with your hands and create a lift of your forearms up off the ground. So the arms are almost set up like they're going to a dog. Press up into tabletop position right here. Yeah, so stack yourself up for tabletop. When I take tabletop, I curl my toes into the mat. Yeah, let me get rid of my reflection. I look cool in the light, but it's hard to see me. Yeah, there we go, back in action. Yeah, so I take my toes curled into the mat and then we're gonna go ahead and just take some basic movements. Sink the spine down and look forward, small movements. Exhale, round anchor, the hands and the arms and look in. Come to a sinking the spine down and looking forward. Exhale, rounding and looking in. Again, inhale, sinking the spine down, looking forward. Make movement and breath kind of work together. Round and look in. One more, sinking the spine down and looking forward. Hollow out and round and look in. Come to flat back tabletop position. Walk the hands like a couple more inches for, for, further forward and a little further out. Index fingers turn out. Curl the toes into the mat, lift the hips, dog. And take a couple breaths here in your down dog to just kind of pump out your leg. Moving the right leg, moving the left leg. Shimming your hips a bunch of times wagging your tail, as we like to call it, spreading the toes wide. And then when you're ready, find stillness, complete rest in this pose. So it is possible to take an active posture and kind of find stillness, that's the goal. Yeah. Breathe your hips way up off your shoulders this morning. And if you feel like that's challenging for you, yeah, take a little bit bigger of a stance. Take up more, more space on your mat. Anchor through your hands, your thumb, your index finger, your baby finger. There's a strong wrapping in of your outer triceps. Yeah. And you can keep your knees as bent as you need to. Perfect. Let the head just drop. Yeah. It's amazing how you collect tension in your body. In this dog, roll forward to a plank position, all the way forward plank position. So dog to plank. And you wanna feel in plank that you're really able to support your body. Anchor through your hands, feel the weight all the way forward on your tippy toes, let the crown of the head move forward and lead a little with your heart and chest. Feel like you're moving your shoulders away. Hips up and back downward facing dog. So we're just gonna take some very simple movements here. Breathe your right leg up and back, three-legged down dog. Yeah, grip your left hip in. Come forward and hug your right knee in and up, scoop up your belly. Land your right foot forward and through, drop your back knee on an angle. Be on your fingertips. It's always great to have some blocks or something the shape of a block nearby if you feel like you need a little extra support, okay? Root to rise in a supported lunge. Your right knee tracks over your right ankle. Mm-hmm. Your arms are energetically moving up 
and your left thigh is sinking down. So this is giving the psoas release. This is that frontline opener. Most of us need a lot of this. Good, the hands come down to frame your front foot. Integrate your hands to the mat. Integrate your left knee, you're in a low lunge. You're gonna step into a dog position here in one motion. Then roll forward to a plank position. Mm -hmm. Lead with your heart and chest a little. Drop your knees on an angle, keep the toes curled and lower halfway to a supported push-up. I will remind you in this practice, less is more. So micro movements are totally acceptable. Straighten your arms, supported plank. Lift your knees so you're in a strong plank. Lots of good energy here. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Breathe your left leg up and back. When you lift, lift only as high as your hips gonna let you go before it opens. Come forward and hug your left knee in and up. Squeeze the abdominal wall. Land the left foot forward and through. Drop the back knee on an angle. Keep the toes curled. Root to rise, supported lunge. Yeah, and if for some reason your back feels sensitive, you could always pull out of it. Like I'm demonstrating here, the thigh bone draws back and you're more straight up and down. If you're okay, you can lunge a little deeper and this is gonna give you more of a stretch to that front thigh. Hands move up, waist lifts, hands then come down to the ground. Integrate your back knee in a low lunge, step to a dog. In this dog, roll forward to a plank position, one motion. Drop your knees so they're on an angle, halfway to a some version of a push-up. Restraighten your arms to supported plank. Lift the knees so you're in a solid plank. Take a breath, don't just go there because I'm like, oh, fine, plank, engage. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. So moving on the breath, guys. Breathe the right leg up and back, three-legged down dog. Come forward to plank, hug your right knee in and up. Slide your right foot forward and through, you're in a low lunge. Drop the back knee on an angle. Root to rise, supported lunge. So you're not moving too fast, not too slow. Hands come down to frame your front foot. Integrate the back knee first. Step to a dog. Once you arrive in dog, like an ocean wave, roll forward to a plank. Drop your knees on an angle, halfway to a supported push-up. Restraighten to supported plank. Lift the knees, find a strong plank, activate your quadriceps and your navel. Hips up and back, down dog. Breathe your left leg up and back. Only lift it as high as the hip's gonna let it go. Come forward and hug your left knee in and up. Scoop up the belly. Land the left foot forward and through. Drop the back knee on an angle. Root to rise, supported lunge. Yes. Hands come down to frame your front foot. Integrate the back knee, listen carefully. Step to the top of the mat, feet hips with distance. Long spine on the inhale. If you're struggling to get the hands to the ground, hands can rest on your shins. This is very, this is a great way to take this. Weight is forward and always a little bend behind your knees. Exhale, fold, let your head go. Root to rise, come all the way up. Drag your hands to prayer at heart, drop your arms. Good, my feet are a little separated. They'll probably creep together as we move. So find what works best for you. Arms go straight up towards the sky. Look up a little. Dive over bent knees, forward fold, let your head go. Long spine on your inhale. Step, step to plank. When you arrive in plank, if you like the, the preferred version of the knees down, take it modified. Halfway to a push up that works for you. Up dog or baby cobra, press to your hands, the tops of your feet, some sort of back bend. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Deep breath in. Full breath out. Nowhere to go but be here on your little magic carpet ride. Arms are straight. Look where you want to go. Step or float top of mat. Get there nice and light. Long spine on your inhale. Exhale, fold, let your head go. Root to rise, come all the way up. Drag your hands to prayer at heart, drop your arms. Arms go straight up towards the sky, go big. Dive over bent knees, forward fold, let your head go. Long spine to prepare, step, step to plank. So if you're just stepping, I like to alternate which leg goes back, good luck remembering. Halfway to a push up. 
upward facing pulls you through. Baby cobras are there for you as well. Hips up and back, downward facing. Guys, when you take cobra pose, just reminding you, your hands aren't all the way forward. Your hands are back like this, so there's a hugging into the shoulders. And I keep my feet about hips width distance. This is still a back bend if you're not choosing to take up dog, okay? So we're here in a downward facing dog. Let's look to the top of the mat. Step or float to get their life. Long spine, keep your weight forward. Exhale, fold. Root to rise, come all the way up. Drag it to prayer, drop your arms. Arms go straight up towards the sky. Dive over bent knees, forward fold, let your head go. Long spine sets you up. You can step, you can float, you can crawl back. Move through a variation of a vinyasa that works. Up dog or cobra or take it all out. Hips up and back, downward facing. Spread the toes wide. Mount, melt the center of the heel down. And every exhale gets you a little deeper, a little further into clearing the plate for the, each, each next pose. Look where you wanna go. Step or float, top to the top of mat. Long spine, weight is forward. Fold into yourself. Root to rise, come all the way up. Hands to prayer at heart. Drop your arms. Arms go straight up. Dive over bent knees, let your head go. Long spine to prepare, step or float through a vinyasa. Adding or subtracting push-ups, push push back bends. Upward facing is smooth. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Breathe your right leg up and back, three-legged down dog. Keep the right, right leg in space. Scissor your inner thighs together, grip the left hip in. Good, come forward to plank. Take your right knee, drag it to the back of your right tricep. Yeah. Right leg up and back, three-legged down dog, press through space. Come forward, hug your right knee in and up to the center. Right leg up and back, three-legged down dog. Come forward, drag your right knee to the back of your right tricep. Extend the right leg up and back, one more. Come forward and hug the right knee in, scoop up the belly, land your right foot forward and through. Be in a low lunge on your fingertips for a moment. There's a gripping of your right hip, an activation of your back left leg, root to rise, high lunge. When you come to high lunge, if you feel any pressure in your lower back, a soft bend of your back knee is very, very, very supportive. So find something that works. You're heavy in the standing right thigh, your hip points are moving forward. Your arms are energetically reaching up. Your eyes are fixed on one spot. It's called your drishti. Hold. Maintain your breath, maintain your stability and your focus and just feel. Feel the heaviness of the front leg, feel the activation of the back leg. Focus on that standing front leg you're gonna drag your left leg up into a tree pose. You're gonna step up. You may need to use your left hand to bring your left leg up into a version of tree that works. Once the leg bends into tree, the arms can grow back up towards the sky any which way. If having the arms up doesn't work, hands can always be in prayer. Fix your eyes, hug your outer hips in. Find some stillness here. Keep the shape of the lower half of the body. Just drop your arms alongside your body, okay? Interlace your hands behind your back. Just keep tree legs, but with the hands bound, clasping the hands and the eyes of the shoulders get a nice little opening, a soft little back bend here. Focus on that standing right leg. You're gonna guide your left leg back into a warrior one with your hands bound behind you. So just have to step your left foot back, warrior one. Steer the left side of your body forward, interlaced hands. Inhale, lift the heart and chest. Exhale, come forward for humble warrior. Your stomach could rest on your thigh or you can snuggle your right shoulder to the instep of that right leg, you pick. Back foot's on a very strong angle. My back foot is almost completely pivoted forward. My right hip has a tendency to wanna wing out. That's just kind of the nature of the body. Nice, really good work. Yeah, you want to feel, you want to feel something. 
Keep steering the left side of your body forward as you hold. Let the head go. Two more breaths. Keep strong sensation in your legs. Just start to bring your torso up. Just your torso comes up. The legs are still in warrior one. Sweep your arms out and up and then see if you can gather them together over the top of your head in a prayer and kind of feel the sides of your ribs gather in, the sides of your arms. Press heavy through your feet and your legs. Look up a little with your eyes without your neck dropping back. And then take it to the floor through a vinyasa of your choice. If you're not into all the push-ups and the back bends, just go to dog and hold and breathe. Meet me in a downward facing dog. Okay, breathe your left leg up and back, three-legged down dog. So let's not fling the leg, let's lift with purpose. Feel your hips gather in. So you're gonna come forward and drag your left knee to the back of the left tricep, or at least in the general direction. Might not get there today. Draw the belly in, press through your hands. Extend the left leg up and back, three-legged down dog. Come forward and hug it straight in. Scoop up the belly. Extend it back, three-legged down dog. Activate. One more cycle. Come forward, left knee back, a left tricep. We're just warming up the hip here. Extend the leg up and back. One more for good luck. Come forward, hug the knee in, scoop up the belly. Look forward and land your left foot forward and through. Before you just bounce up, integrate your left hip, activate your back leg, heavy in that front thigh, and then rise on your breath, on your movement, high lunge. Modify how you need. Hip points move forward, side of your ribs lift. If you need to soften that back leg, go ahead and do so. So there's no perfect yoga pose. It's finding balance in your body right? It's finding what works for today. So I know in my own practice from day to day, balance changes, breath changes, nothing's ever the same. Okay, so you're going to think about that standing leg, you're going to press up, you may need to use your right hand to encourage this right leg up into tree. And it may not be the prettiest movement. So just try your best tree pose and then regrow your branches once you get there. The trick with tree is hugging of your hips in and integrating the leg that you're balancing on. So really fire it up. Side ribs long, belly grow, draws in. Fix your eyes and then have some peace in the pose if possible. Feel. Good, keep the shape, just drop your arms down by your side body for a second. Interlace your hands. If you could remember the grip, take the opposite thumb, opposite baby finger. Let the eyes of the shoulders kind of lift up and create a little back bend here. Then step back into a warrior one. Take your time doing it. So step into warrior one with bound hands. Once you get that, right rib spin. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, come forward. Humble. I generally take this pose by just kind of resting my stomach on my thigh. I find that I can really create more of a hip opener by gripping that left hip in. But if you can get in there, by all means, give it a go. Spin the right side of your body forward, anchor through your feet, your legs, pay attention to the little things. The back right leg contracts. Yes. Let your breath just flow. And let your thoughts just go. That rhymed, I didn't mean to make that rhyme. That was actually quite wonderful. Anchor through your legs feel and pull your torso up. Spread your arms up and gather them in a prayer over the top of your head. Heavy in that front thigh, first warrior. Heavy through that back foot, sit a little deeper. Take it to the floor through a vinyasa or opt to just go to a dog. Be happy with the little things. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Look where you wanna go, step or float top of mat. Long spine, keep your weight forward. Exhale, fold. I take chair with my feet separated, hips width. You decide what works for you. Sit heavy in your heels for chair. Stick your butt way back. Little natural curve through your spine. We all have that. Shoot up to stand up, drag it to prayer, drop your arms. We're gonna take three sun bees. Arms go straight up towards the sky. Heavy in your heels for chair. 
Dive over bent knees, let your head go forward fold. Long spine sets you up, step, step, or float through a vinyasa. Adding or subtracting push-ups, take it all out if you don't like it. Hips up and back, down dog. Moving on your breath, the right foot lands, the back foot turns, rise, warrior one. Yeah. Hands come back down through a push-up. Up dog opens you. Hips up and back, down dog. On your breath, the left foot lands, the back foot turns, rise, warrior one. Back down we go, through a vinyasa. Upward facing point, hips up and back, down dog. Be still in this down dog and breathe. Feel the back side of your body, your backs of your legs getting a really nice opening. Good, try and keep your arms super straight. Look where you wanna go, step or float top of mat. Long spine, weight is forward, fold into yourself. Things are heating up, yes. Chair pose, sit heavy in your heels. Shoot up to stand up, drag it to prayer, drop your arms. Here we go, from the top, sounds like a dance routine. Arms go straight up towards the sky, heavy in your heels for chair. Dive over bent knees, forward fold, let your head go. Long spine sets you up, step or float through your variation of a vinyasa. Chaturanga push up is there, up dog pulls you through, nice work. Hips up and back, down dog. Right foot lands, back foot turns, rise on your breath, warrior one. Take your time. Hands come back down through a vinyasa. Adding or subtracting push-ups right now. Good. The left foot lands, the back foot turns on your breath. Here we go. Vinyasa, chaturanga dandasana. Upward facing dog pulls you through. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Be still right here. Slow your mind down, slow your breath down. Look where you wanna go. Step or float top of mat. Get there nice and light. Long spine, weight is forward. Fold into yourself. Sit heavy in your heels for chair. Shoot up to stand up, drag it to prayer, drop your arms. One more, here we go. Arms go straight up, heavy in your heels for chair. Dive over bent knees, forward fold, let your head go. Long spine to prepare, step or float through a vinyasa. I'd rather you slow them down and take them slower than go so fast that you don't even know what's up. Right foot lands, back foot turns, rise warrior one. Take an extra breath in it, who cares? Bring it back down when you're ready, chaturanga. Up dog pulls you through, hips up and back, down dog. The left foot lands, the back foot turns. Let's rise on your breath, warrior one. Take your time. Back down we go through a push up. Up dog pulls you through, hips up and back, downward facing dog. So turn your toes to the left and your heels to the right, and then step your right hand an inch forward further, and let's go into a Vashistasana with staggered feet, okay? Staggered feet in Vashistasana. I will remind you always, you can modify with your knee down, such as I'm demonstrating here. You can float your leg up, and you can take a little leg lifts if you want to work this, or you can just stay with the feet staggered. From your bottom hip through your top hip, you lift. The top arm can wrap up and forward. That's gonna create a little bit more of an oblique exercise. Keep the breath flowing and breathe. Eyes go to the floor, left hand comes down, find a plank position, hold here. Add in a push up if you feel you can do that. Up dog pulls you through, hips up and back down dog. Toes go to the right and heels go to the left. Left hand has to kind of shimmy out like an inch or so. And then you roll Vashi Stasana, side plank. Modify how this works best. 
You can drop the bottom knee, guys. Top arm can reach straight up or it can come up and over. They sometimes have one side that's weaker than the other. So one side I can take normal, the other side maybe I have to modify. I know that that's totally common, okay? Lift from your bottom hip to your top hip and breathe. Stay with it. Two more breaths. Plank position. Chaturanga push-up, do it slow. Up dog pulls you through, slow. Nice, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Let's look to the top of the to uh, towel or mat, step or float the feet there. Long spine on the inhale, exhale, fold. Sit into chair pose right here, heavy in your heels. Shoot up to stand up. Drag it to prayer at heart, drop your arms. Chair pose right here, but I want you to really drop your seat. Feel the weight in your heels. And you're gonna lower all the way to boat Navasana. If you have blocks, that's great. You're gonna take a supported boat. So the blocks or something out in front of you. If you don't have blocks, you can kind of claw the mat with your hands. The legs are bent in half, guys. The toes kind of spark up. The idea here is that you're working deep in your core muscles. The eyes, the shoulders are lifted. So you don't wanna be in your lower back. That's why the use of the blocks is kind of nice. Good. You're gonna lower halfway to an Arda Navasana. And you're gonna to continue to use your hands on blocks or the floor. So as you lower, everything kind of hovers here. Legs can be lifted at any angle that works for you and your lower back. What you wanna feel is your lower back really pressing into the mat. The second it pops up, you gotta find a spot you know that it's not, it's staying connected. Eyes of the shoulders lift, gaze looks up. So I'm showing you in my version, my legs aren't super low. I'm keeping my lower back mounted down. Keeping my hands on something, blocks or mat, I'm gonna pull back up, Navasana. The beauty of your mute is that I can't hear the things that you're saying. Good, eyes of the shoulders lift deep inside your belly here, you're lifted. Cross the ankles, plant the hands, step or float through a vinyasa. Okay, we'll revisit that in a little. Up dog opens you. Hips up and back, down dog. Land your right foot forward into a low lunge and pause. Take your block, step it up on the high setting or medium setting. Left hand to hip, you're gonna step right up into Arda today, half moon. The balancing pose. Your hand can stay on your hip. So what I find is it's like you're looking at the camera, you may, that may kind of like pull you out. So look down towards the floor to get your balance, grip your right hip in. Once you know the pose, you don't really have to look and then stack your left arm up if you can. Arden Trindrasana, basic balancing half moon pose. Grip your right hip in. Feel the side of your ribs activating and elongating, spark up your left toes. If there's any add-ons here that you feel you need to take like a bind or working on balance, go for it now. If not, just stay in its basic form. If you fall out of the pose, retry again, restart, it's okay. Start slow. Three more breaths, wherever you are. If you're in a bind, maybe just release to a regular version of this. We're gonna transition slowly to triangle. So if you use your block, you're gonna drag it back with you. If you don't, step slowly, pull up on the front of the shin, trikonasana, side ribs stay long. So it's a challenging transition, but it is doable. Side body nice and long. Back leg turned on a little angle. If you always have the option to reset, you come out of it, you go back in. There's a zillion ways to get in and out of these poses. Good, breathe right here. There's a gripping of your outer hips. I know sometimes when you hold these things, like your neck starts to feel a little funky sometimes. You can just look down, but let your right shoulder kind of slide in. Yeah, three more breaths, wherever you are. 
Eyes go to the floor. Let's just take it to the ground and move ourselves through a vinyasa. Just keep it real simple this morning. Up dog opens you, hips up and back down dog. Sometimes it's nice to just simplify. The left foot steps forward, you're in a low lunge, just pause. Because what you really want to pay attention to is your left foot and your left hip. I automatically go high, yeah, with that block. And it's enough forward that your side body is long. Right hand can move to your hip and then you step up, Arda. If your balance is crappy today, you can always go to a wall. Yeah. Hug in. Yes, it's, it's any time we work on balance, we anticipate falling. So that's just part of the challenge. Maybe get a little lighter in the bottom hand. Stay with it, guys. If you're adding things in, that's cool. Let's give it a couple more breaths. Yeah, if you took on anything a little more funky, just be in its basic form right now. And then we're gonna move into triangle, but see if you could do it really, really slow. So you have to bend your front leg and take a giant step back and then pull up on the front of the shin and see if you can really make it like an art. It didn't work out, it's okay. Use your block if you feel like you're dumping down, always goes to the outside of the calf. If you need to reset, you reset. Your left foot is, is, is pointing the front skinny edge of the mat. Your back foot is on an angle. And you wanna feel like you're really opening up your heart and chest here, but you're stacked up. Couple more. Good, we're gonna transition a little different. So let the top arm pull you up so your arms are straight and your legs are straight. Turn your toes in, uh-huh. Take your hands to your hips. So you're gonna turn your right toes out towards the back skinny edge of the mat. I'm just doing the opposite of you because I turned towards the camera. You're gonna reopen up your arms. If you have blocks, you can kind of move them around with you. And then you're gonna sit into warrior two. So if you know you need it, just grab it. Mm -hmm. Look down and let's find warrior two. So you're in warrior two on the right side. Lengthen your tailbone, spread your collarbone nice and wide. And let's just be here for a bunch of breaths. Set yourself up. So these poses that you hold can be challenging, but also empowering. So let your body just kind of go there. Wrap your inner right thigh open. Give both your arms extra love. Five more breaths. Flip the palm reverse, let the side body get a little opening. We're gonna come into B variation. So come through the center and the hand's gonna come down on the instep. How I remember B is B is for bind. So to take the bind correctly from the inside of your leg. So place the block there and then the left hand can either come to your hip or it can wrap behind your back. This is called a half bind. If you are going for a full bind, the right arm will come under, you'll grab both your hands and there'll be a lift up and back so that you're creating some space between your side right ribs and your right thigh. I'd rather you be in the half version or no version than be in it kind of crummy. So grip the right hip in, turn the bottom ribs and then look up. How can you soften? Soften your breath, soften your thoughts, just be here. Anchor strong through your legs, warrior two, pull it up. Straighten the leg on track, bring your hands to your hips, turn the right toes in. So before we go to the other side, let's clasp the hands and interlace them, inhale, lift, and exhale, we'll fold down the center just to kind of let it go, let the head go. Pick the distance of your feet that works for you. Yeah, if your head hits the floor, that means that you need a big, a smaller stance. Yes, a lot of us need to just bend deeply. 
Breathe the hips way up off those shoulders. Perfect. Come up halfway, slide your hands to your hips. Come the rest of the way up. Yes. So from your left foot, you're just gonna turn your left toes out and then turn your back right toes in and spread your arms nice and wide. So you should be facing the front skinny edge of the mat, find warrior two. So if you need your block, just kind of move it with you. It's a traveling block. And then let's find warrior two here and hold. Heavy in that front thigh, lengthen the tailbone, wrap the inner thigh open. And then maybe close your eyes and just be present for yourself. Five more breaths. Give your right arm a little bit more. Yeah, so you're even. Good, flip the palm, reverse the warrior, let the side body open first, and then find your way into that B variation that works for you. I like a block to the instep. Your arm can also rest on the top of the thigh. Right hand can slide to your hip. You could wrap it behind you for the half bind. You're welcome to go for the full bind as well. There's a turning of the collarbone and chest, ripping in of that left hip. Once you find the pose, we hold and breathe here. Nowhere to run to, just the posture. Strong anchor of that right leg, stay with it. A few more. The long holds get you good. Rip that left hip in a little more, turn the bottom ribs. Warrior two, pull it up. Look forward, take it to the floor. Let's move ourselves through a vinyasa now. Take that chaturanga push up that I know you're dying to take, upward facing, hips up and back, downward facing. Keep some blocks to the top of your mat, guys. Right foot lands, back foot turns. Let's rise on your breath, warrior one. Yeah, warrior one. Anywhere you want your arms. I like them alongside the body. Your hands could also come to prayer. You pick, you're gonna float off into a warrior three. I suggested having blocks here. If your balance is kind of shoddy today, you can take it like this. In my warrior three, I always bend my standing right leg. Arms can be reaching back. So you're floating in space here. Mm -hmm. Warrior three, any variation of warrior three, your hips are squared off towards the floor. Your heart is lifting a little higher than everything else and you're breathing. Hands come to prayer at heart, eyes go to the floor. Left hand comes down, I would utilize the block here. Enough forward, right hand comes to the flat part of the back. This is revolved Ardha Trindrasana. It's a very challenging pose, but I know you can do it. Grip your right hip in, lift from your inner left thigh, look sideways, look up. You don't have to spread your top arm open. You can just keep it on the flat part of your back. Scissor the inner and outer thighs together, lift that left leg a little higher and twist open. Take another big breath in, you've got this. Right hand comes down, step the feet to the top of the mat and sit immediately into chair pose. Don't let your brain check out. Drag the hands to prayer at heart. Inhale the breath, we're twisting again to the right. Weight is in your heels. Air twisting is acceptable. You can just stay up and you don't have to hook. Work on your alignment. Two knees, your shins, your feet, everything aligned. Weight is in the heels. Open up your arms if you want a little more or stay as you are. Look sideways, look up, twist. Heavy in your legs, guys, stay with it, chair pose. As you arrive in this chair, you're gonna press to stand, your arms are gonna move up and your right leg is gonna drag up to a 90 degree angle. So 90 degree angle. Wrap your right thigh around your left as much as you can. Wrap your right arm under. You can use your big toe like a kickstand like I'm demonstrating here. You wanna bend deep into that standing left leg. Lift your elbows up. Squeeze your arms and squeeze your legs super tight and then look forward.
Focus on your left leg, guys. You're gonna unravel just your arms and then unravel the right leg back, warrior one. Left side, warrior one. If you got lost somewhere in this party, warrior one on the left side. Drop your arms anywhere that you'd like to go. Tip forward with your torso. Launch off warrior three. Utilizing blocks if your balance needs a little support. I like my arms back, but they can be hands in prayer. They can be forward. This is the most challenging. So just giving you options. Little bend behind that left leg or deep bend if you feel like you need it. Your whole body is neutral towards the ground. Wherever your hands and your arms went, bring them to a prayer at the center. Eyes go to the floor. Right hand's gonna come to that block. Left hand's gonna come to the flat part of your back. We're setting up for revolved Ardhan Trundrasana. So think warrior three with a little more oomph. Grip your hips in. I like my hand today on the flat part of my back, but if you're able to spread it open, go for it. You can activate your back leg by pointing your toes. That may give you a little bit more energy. Look sideways, look up and twist here. Stay with it. Lots of good extension through your side body. Breathe and revolve. Eyes go to the floor, hands come down to the center, feet land at the top of the mat. I like them hips distance, sit into chair. Drag the hands to prayer, stay with the flow here. Inhale the breath, let's hook and twist towards the left. So as you get in there, know that you can air twist. I'm showing an air twist here where I'm not actually hooking my elbow. I'm really just working on my alignment. Heavy in your heels. You got it, Jody. Sit a little deeper. And breathe. You're in your happy place. Well, maybe not, but you know, envision something good. Two more breaths. Pull around to chair. Pull around to chair. Your arms are moving up. So now you're going to press to stand. And when you press to stand, you're going to be on your right leg. Your left leg's going to lift up. Okay, wrap the left thigh around the right as much as it's gonna go. Wrap the left arm under for eagle standing on your right leg. Think about your right leg. So this side is so much better for me. Yes, it's crazy how the two sides are different. Steer the knees a little to the left, upper body a little more to the right and pick a dristy. Squeeze down the center, couple more. So focus on your legs, squeeze them tight, 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 tight. Just unravel your arms. So you're gonna unravel this time into crescent lunge. Just guide your left leg back, high lunge. Yes, set up the stance, drag the hands to prayer, lean out, hook the elbow and twist. We'll continue with this twisting. Activate your back leg or know the modification. You can just rest your back knee down like I demonstrated here. Grip the right hip in and twist open. You got it, point the elbow towards the sky. Stay with it, couple more breaths. We'll do something fun. Two more. Look sideways, look up, give it a little bit more love. Good, hands to frame your front foot here. So walk your right foot to the center of the mat and then step your left knee up. You're gonna come to sit, Ardha Matsundrasana, seated spine twist. So your left leg is bent and your right foot is on the outside of your left knee. Both butt cheeks are on the ground, right hand is behind you. And you're just gonna go ahead and hug this leg, give it a good squeeze or hook the elbow if you need more. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, look over the shoulder and twist. Yes, you're looking to the right and twisting. Yep. Come back through center. You're gonna counter stretch if that feels appropriate to you. You're gonna neutralize yourself here. You're gonna extend your right leg out so it's like a little tree pose, okay? 
and left palm's gonna go behind. You're gonna come up into sail pose. The left knee is down, the right leg is forward, the right arm reaches up and back. Mm -hmm. The back bend. Lift a little higher. Exhale, breath lowers you down. Mm -hmm. Rebend the legs like this. We're going to set up for boat navasana. Claw the mat with your hands or reach your arms this time forward. Lift the eyes and the shoulders up. Squeeze the navel to the back of the spine and hold here. If you want more intensity, the arms can lift towards the ceiling or sky. Ardha Navasana, three breaths. Arms reaching back is gonna be the most intense. Hands can stay down on the ground for a little support. Legs can lift in any angle that works. Lower back has to press down into the mat. Navasana, pull it up. No one's judging, just get up. Yep, cross the ankles, step or float through a vinyasa of choice or none. Up dog pulls you through, stay with me guys. Hips up and back down dog, land your left foot forward, crescent lunge, rise on your breath. Drag the hands to the prayer. The trick with this pose is guys, lean all the way out first, create the length and then hook. You can stay in kind of an elevated twist where you don't hook. Dropping the back knee is a great alternative. Yes. Steer your left hip under, activate your back leg. Okay, so I'm going to give you one little piece of advice here. Look sideways or look up. If you look back, we have a tendency to round. You got it. You're doing good, Jody. No worries. Two more breaths. You should be feeling something. Maria's like, oh yeah. Hands to frame your front foot, pause. So the trick is, is walk your foot to the center of the mat and then drag your right knee in and up and sit. Your foot's to the outside of the right knee. You gotta make sure your both butt cheeks are down. Left hand behind you. I honestly just need to give this leg a squeeze and I feel a lot through the piriformis. But if you want to hook and twist, that's going to give you a little more. Keep your left foot flat on the floor, guys. Hug that leg in, interlace, inter, um, root with your tailbone towards the floor and then twist over. Good. Come back through center. You can counter stretch the opposite direction if that feels good. Neutralize the spine, extend that left leg out so the right leg is bent, right hand behind you. It's like a little tree. You're gonna lift up and back into sail pose. Yes, right palm is flat. Fingers are facing the back skinny edge of the mat. The right knee is down on the floor to create a little lift. And then lift a little higher. Exhale the breath, lower down. So from here, what we're gonna do is just swing the left leg behind us and we're gonna be in a half pigeon on the right side. If that didn't work out for you, you can always reset like I'm showing here, down dog, and then swing your right knee forward, okay? Sometimes things don't feel good, so we have to make them work. And then fold, fold into this half pigeon. Let your body, your hips, your mind, your breath just kind of go. Allow your eyes to close if you can. And just focus on the inhale and focus on the exhale. Downward facing dog, let's switch sides. 
slide your left knee forward. Yeah, and then fold. Close your eyes and just breathe. To get out of this, guys, you're gonna control, you can, can like uh, karate chop the mat and interlace your hands. It's gonna look like this. Integrate your back leg and then slide your left leg back. You're gonna be in a forearm plank. Fist your hands for me. Activate your core and fix your eyes on one spot. Hold, gather the sides of the triceps in, grip the navel to the back of the spine. Maintain a strong sense of core here as you plug down. Five more breaths. Lower all the way to your belly, sphinx pose. Your forearms are forward like this. Your elbows come a little bit more forward. You wanna feel like you're dragging the floor of the mat forward as you lead with your chest. Do me a favor and keep your feet hips width distance. It's so much better for the lower back. Just kick your right leg up and see if you can grab from the outside. Flex the right foot and steer the whole body forward as you fan your right thigh down towards the ground. So guys, it's not about lifting that right thigh in this exercise. It's about letting your right foot fall into your right hand and keeping the left side of the body plugged down. Steer the chest forward. Let the right leg go, sphinx pose. Good. The hand can turn a little forward if you need to. Left leg lifts up, grab from the outside, and it's more about like lifting the shoulder blade up and getting a back bend while your left thigh plugs down into the mat. The right leg stays down as well. Breathe. Let it go, Sphinx pose. Slide your hands back, up dog or cobra you pick. Last back bend here. Hips up and back downward facing dog. Hop your feet all the way through. Yeah, legs straight out, feet about hips width distance. The block's gonna go in between your hands if you have it. Inhale the block straight up towards the sky. This is a version of Dandasana. So the spine is very long, the feet are very flexed, the side of your body is long. If you don't have a block, just encourage the hands to be straight up. Draw the belly in. Yeah, the blocks just are gonna create a strong lift. So flex your feet and sit up as tall as you can. Make sure you're not jutting your chin forward. Fix your eyes, hold here. Breathe. You'll notice that the longer you hold your arms in this position, the more they're gonna come forward. So see if you can bring your arms back. Yeah. Flex the feet more. Press down through the floor. Lift a little higher. So you're gonna to start to lean out, but you're gonna do it really, really slow. You're gonna keep a very long spine for as long as you can. And then if you can bring the block to the base of the feet, that's great and keep the length. And then of course, you're gonna to have to round a little in order to really find it, unless you've got a super flat back. If you can't get the block here, just let it go and slide the hand somewhere where you can find just really nice extension, flex the feet, breathe. So it's a forward fold, but we're making it very deliberate. Exhale the breath, pull yourself up, lay down, bring that block with you. Finishing off here, guys, stay with me. Bend your knees, lift your hips up and let's find supported bridge. If you can go the highest level with the block and shove it underneath, that's great. If your back's a little more sensitive, maybe it's gotta go a little lower. And then set up here, robot the arms, legs, feet, everything steered forward. And then one leg at a time, start to lift the legs up. So you're in a supported shoulder stance, okay? So it's essentially, we just, we're doing the same thing we just did, right? Yes. Kind of neat when you break down the poses like that. So you're on your back right here. 
Your legs are lifted in space. Two more. These are great guys, really nice. So bend your knees in half, take your feet flat to the floor. Once the feet come down, then remove the block out from under. I've seen it all sorts of ways. And then lower the lower back down towards the ground. Hug the knees in towards the chest, give them a very big squeeze. And then let's find happy baby. Grab the outer blades of your feet and pull your knees down around your rib cage. Yeah. If you need a little bit more hamstring stuff here, you can hook your big toes and straighten your legs. Yes, totally optional. Everything's optional. Good, and then hug your knees in. Give yourself a nice tight little squeeze and find Shavasana, complete rest. And I know we're in our homes, it's distracting. There's things around you that you know could bug you, but give yourself the next two minutes. Cover yourself up, put something over your eyes. Lay down and just be still. I promise you, you will feel really good. Take a big breath in. Exhale loud through your mouth. <sighs> wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. Bring your arms up over the top of the head, a full stretch. Hug your knees in towards your chest. Give them a big squeeze. And with your eyes closed, just rock yourself up to a seated position. Just sit up nice and tall. When you arrive in this final pose, let the hands draw to prayer, bow your head for a second. So learning to find time to pause is truly a gift. It's not really about the yoga poses. It's about finding the time to pause and just be present. So good for you. Lift your head, open your eyes. Namaste. Go out there, have an awesome afternoon. If you're here in New Jersey, it looks like the sun is visiting us, so run. And I'll be doing this again Friday. So see you then.